Good evening and welcome to this canal service um, from all the churches on Mersey and the surrounding areas as they come together to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. But before I open in prayer, could I give you some information um, as you join the service? Because although the service will be going out live, you'll be able to join and send messages. There's a small um, box where you can live stream, type in your messages, just saying Merry Christmas from the Hughes family or Merry Christmas from Terry and Lex. Uh, but you can do that and that will be at the start of the service and then during prayer you can enter your prayer requests there as well. But so now let's just take some time uh, and have a moment of prayer before our carol service begins. As we meet to celebrate anew the coming of God's kingdom, we hear reveal the mystery of God's loving purpose for us. How that when we were so far off, he met us in his son and brought us home. How he humbled himself to take our human nature that we might share in his divine glory. Let us then so celebrate his coming with carols and hymns of praise, that our lives may be ch changed and charged with his life, that we may bear witness to his glory and so bring the light to those who sit in darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. He was with God in the beginning. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. That life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. 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 And the darkness has not overcome it. 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 But the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh. He made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only. Who came from the Father. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth.
people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God for his word. Month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his word and pondered what sort of greeting that might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, 
how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit come upon you, and the power of Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month of her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Amen. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they, be they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 
She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will be he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Joseph woke up from sorry, Joseph woke up. He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the Emperor Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This first census was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to his own town to be registered. Joseph too set out from Nazareth to Galilee, as he belonged to the family of David. Being a descendant of his, he went to Judea to David's town of Bethlehem to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. They were in Bethlehem when the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. This is the word of the Lord.
we're going to have a time of prayer now and this will be an opportunity for us to bring to God either the people or the places or the situations that are on our heart and the way we're going to do this is we're going to have the opportunity to type in the name of the place that either people or the situation are and we're doing this through our website which is below and uh, what you do is you type into the comment box the name of the place like uh, I may have a friend say in Birmingham who I'm really concerned about and so I would type Birmingham into the box rather than my friend's name it's really important we don't put people's names or actual situations in but rather we put in the town name or the country name of where the people live that we are concerned for if you'd like to pray for an organization say like the NHS then absolutely put the organization name in but when it's personal and it's relating to people please put in the name of the place or their town or their country and the way we're going to pray is in this way so during this next song there will be uh, some music and then we will go into the song and that will give us time to type in our prayer request for the people the places or the situations where we would love God's light to shine where we would love God's love and God's hope to be um, and at the end of that song I will draw all our prayers together and bring our prayers before God let's come to God in worship and putting our prayers before him
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who hears our prayers. Lord, we bring to you those that are on our hearts, the people we love, the people we care for, the places, Lord, where your light, we would love it to shine. And so, Lord, we ask that your love, your hope and your light would dwell in all these places and in all these situations. Amen. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah would be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good evening, my name is Rob and I am one of the ministers at the Free Church. We want to say firstly just a big thank you to everybody who has helped with this evening's service, whether that's through readings or through the carols or, or whatever way other people have contributed to help make this evening happen. A big thank you to you all. I don't know how you are when it comes to unwrapping Christmas presents. So you're someone who's really careful and slowly undoes the wrapping bit by bit, very careful, and then places the wrap aside. Or are you somebody who kind of just pulls, kind of rips the whole thing apart, <laughs> tears everything, and makes a huge big mess kind of around the tree and where it is? You know, I'm probably a bit more of a kind of a rip it and throw the, the wrapping person. That's probably because I'm a bit of a kind of a messy person. Generally, my desk is messy and, and I cook, it's messy, and the mess seems to kind of just follow me kind of around everywhere. You know, the Christmas story is messy in a different kind of way. Kind of messy situations going on. So you've got Mary and kind of the idea of being pregnant outside of marriage back then was a real big taboo thing and, and it brought shame and she had to go off and see her cousin. It was a real kind of messy, messy situation for someone to be in. And then you're Joseph and the, the problems of him then taking Mary on his wife when people said, well, is that your child? Is it not your child? There's a whole lot of kind of, kind of shame, messy, messy situation going on there. You know, the whole land they were living in was occupied. It was a really messy, complicated situation people were living in. And then as part of being occupied by the Romans, they got carted off and having to go to different towns to register. And so you know, Mary and Joseph, Mary's nine months pregnant, and having to go on this long journey to to, to Bethlehem is not ideal. And then they get there, it's oh, what a state of things that there's nowhere to stay. And then there's, uh, the only place they do find in the end is this manger, mucky, messy place for animals where Jesus is born. It's a kind of a messy thing. And then after the main story as well, then Mary, Joseph and Jesus have to go off as refugees to Egypt. A messy situation. It's not neat and tidy. We think of a very neat, tidy Christmas picture. But actually, when we look at the characters and what's going on involved, it's a really messy situation. And if we are honest, sometimes our, 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 our lives don't quite match what our Facebook profiles are. So we might have a nice, neat image on Facebook that we project to the world. But actually, deep down, we know that actually our lives are a little bit more messy and complicated than that. And maybe your Christmas this year is feeling messy for any number of reasons. Maybe uh, your plans have obviously probably been affected by the current situation that's been going on all year. Maybe life is a bit more messy than you would want it to be this Christmas time. In that first Christmas story, though, you get this visit of these angels to these shepherds and they say, there, this is good news for all people. Good news, not for some people, not for people whose lives seem all, all organised, but actually good news for all people, whether your life feels organised or whether your life feels a little bit messy. So what is that good news? Really, very quickly, this is it. Firstly, God sees the mess in the world. He says, do you know what? I still want to come to the world. I still want to know you. You know, from before time began, I wanted to know you. I knew the kind of mess you might end up in, but I knew you and I wanted to still for you to know me. I want you in my family. So I came to earth with the mess that was going on in the world then and the mess that is going on in the world now. He says, I want to know you. That is good news. Number two, God is with us. You know, this has been a year when we've been thinking so much about isolation, haven't we? People being isolated in different ways from each other. But one of the Christmas messages is this, that they would call, uh, it was like, it's called a sign of this baby that was going to be born, and it would be called Emmanuel. And that basically just means God with us. You know, in our messy lives that we are together, God says, I want to be with you in it. I will not leave you. However messy and complicated things get, I will not leave you. That is good news. And the third thing is this, that God knows what it is like to live. If you've ever been camping, you know that you kind of experience everything when you're kind of camping. You hear everything, I mean, literally everything that's going on. Uh, you hear, it's not always uh, so good, but you hear everything. And what the Bible tells us is this, is that, that, that when Jesus was born, it was like he pitched his tent with us. He heard everything. He saw everything. But he also experienced everything it was like 
to live. So when we pray, we don't pray to God and you say, well, you don't understand what it's like, God. Actually, because say, God, you know exactly what it's like. And this is our my messy situation. And so we can talk to God about things that are on our heart, about our situation. This is good news. Finally, going back to that image at the beginning of a Christmas tree, the present and all of the mess around it. And so we have all these bits of paper around the different presents, but that doesn't take away how important those presents are, how precious they are. And in the Christmas story, in the muck of the manger, we have God's precious gift to us all. But in our own lives as well, in the mess that goes on around us, God says, you know, I still see you as precious in the middle. I still uh, love you and, uh, and you're so important to me, despite what's going on around us. You know, it has been a messy year for uh, many, many people, complicated and difficult. But at no point have you not been precious and important and special and loved by God. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, then please get in touch with any of the churches on the island. We're going to sing our final carol now. It has these incredible lines in it. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth. Born to give a second birth. That is good, good news. Let's sing our final song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Praise God. Uh, what a wonderful celebration coming together of different familiar carols, readings and prayers. My name is Father Pascal Uche. I'm stationed at uh, Colchester, St. James the Less and St. Helen, and often come to St. Seds also to celebrate Mass there. It's always a great joy to come to the island. So 
Um, Reverend Rob, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to bring together and to a close what has been a really beautiful evening of carols and prayers. So let's ask God's blessings on us as we prepare now uh, for the coming of Christ in these last few days of Advent. So let's bow our heads and pray for God's, God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the God who loves us so much and so deeply be pleased to bless us all and our families, those travelling to different places to be with their loved ones this Christmas, and keep us all in his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.